I'm a huge fan of Dead Space, and as a fan, I was super hyped for Striking Distance's new IP, The Callisto Protocol. I mean, what can I say? I'm a sucker for a good sci-fi shooter with gross body horror. But this game isn't a shooter per se. Alright, let's just rip the bandit off, okay? The combat in Callisto Protocol, I go back and forth on the combat either being amazing or terrible. Let me explain. The combat is broken up into two systems, shooting, which is pretty standard and very good in this game, but the problem comes with the melee combat. See, the game puts a very heavy, and I mean very heavy, emphasis on melee combat, so much so that you don't get a gun until the end of the first chapter. The best way I can describe it is like Punch-Out. You hold the left analog stick, either left or right, to dodge enemy attacks, and you literally bob and weave like a boxer. You can also hold down on the analog stick to block attacks, but you take chip damage like in Street Fighter or something. Also, uh, there really isn't a lot of enemy variety. I think I maybe counted six different enemies, and most of them are kind of just reskins. Like, there's your typical zombie, right? Easy to beat. There's zombie guard, which fights exactly the same way as the regular zombie. There's the big zombies, which, oh, well, you guessed it, fight exactly the same as the regular zombies, but there are cool enemies, like there are these uh, crawling enemies that crawl over the walls and can turn invisible, and the best way I found to deal with them was to literally pull them in with the grip and just smack, just beat them to death, and that felt really satisfying, right? Uh, there's also, you know, exploding enemies that crawl on the ground and they blow up when you shoot them or get too close to them. And there is one section of the game, spoilers, by the way, where there are these enemies that they are blind and they only respond to sound, which was really interesting. The, the most annoying thing about the enemies, though, is that so there's this mechanic where if some enemies take enough damage, they will sprout tentacles. And if you don't shoot the tentacles, they will turn into like a super enemy, like a big spiky guy that has more health and more damage and is faster. It was cool at first, but when I'm in the middle of beating an enemy because I have no ammo and they sprout tentacles, melee meleeing an enemy when their tentacles pop out does nothing. You have to shoot them. So if you try to, and lucky fucking me, right? I go to beat an enemy to death, they sprout tentacles, I swap to my gun, oh my gun has no ammo, now I have to go through the slow reload animation, and they transform. It's, it's annoying. It was cool at first, but it was annoying when every enemy late game started doing this. Now to be fair, 101 combat is really satisfying, the swings look like they have force and impact, paired with sickening cracks and spurts of blood. And at the end of a combo, a reticle will appear, allowing you to shoot and loop into another combo, which feels good to do. The problem arises from the main character, Jacob Lee, being the slowest moving character ever. Seriously, he walks so slow that I sprinted everywhere, and his sprint is more like a brisk jog. It is almost impossible to run away from enemies. Every enemy is faster than you. Plus, the melee and dodging really stops working when facing down multiple enemies. Your swing can hit multiple enemies, sure, but I kept getting overwhelmed because I couldn't run away to make space. Now, the game does try to make up for it with the grip, which is more or less the kinesis pack from Dead Space that you would use to slow enemies and solve puzzles. There aren't any puzzles in this game, by the way, unless you count finding fuses to open doors as a puzzle. Then there is one puzzle, over and over and over again. The grip can be used to pull enemies in for a melee follow-up, or push them away, or throw them into an environmental hazard, which never got old for me. Now the gunplay is solid. The main gun is a cool idea. It's basically a pistol grip with various attachments like a small shotgun, hand cannon, and assault rifle. Jacob swaps between them by swapping the attachments, but the animation for swapping said attachments is very slow. Like, just look at this. Hurry the fuck up, dude. There is a monster coming for that ass. Dude takes off the attachments like a dad swapping drill bits, and you better have your weapon loaded, because if they aren't, you'll have to waste more time reloading. In terms of bosses, there's really only two bosses. There's 
two head enemies. It's literally what they're called, which always made me laugh because two head. And then there's the final boss. And there's, I guess there's these mini bosses. They're like the security robots. I only ever encountered two of them that you could fight. And you'd literally just shoot them in the head five times. And they do drop loot that you can sell for a decent chunk of money. But fighting them really isn't worth it because they, they one shot you. And why waste the ammo when you can honestly just sneak past them? Another point of contention is the fact that every boss can one-shot you with their melee attacks. And when you die, you get an execution like Death Scene, but it plays every time you die. It got to the point where I just started pausing and hitting the restart from last checkpoint option when a boss killed me. They're really cool, and you can tell a lot of work went into animating them, but they get old when you see the same one dying over to the same boss. Also, the way you heal is by either finding health gel, which is consumed on pickup, or by using a health injector, which roots you in place with a long animation. Yeah, I never even bothered to use these in combat and just healed after beating bosses or enemies. Speaking of health, there are no health upgrades, which really surprised me. But the weapon upgrades are very useful, since enemies are pretty spongy and will take 4-5 to five shots from a shotgun to die. So you won't be doing real damage until you get a damage upgrade or two. The final upgrade for each weapon is really cool though, and unlocks either an alternate fire or new types of rounds like explosive rounds or homing rounds for example. You can also upgrade your stun baton to have faster swings, heavy swings with a big windup, less damage taken when blocking, extra hits in your combo, etc. The game unfortunately didn't scare me that much, aside from a couple of times. Like, there are these heads that come out of pods on the ground and grab you to pull you in and you have to mash triangle to escape and kill them. But the game kept reusing the same scare until I just found it annoying. The game also has loot crates you can find that hold various items like health, ammo, batteries for the grip, and valuables that you can sell for credits. But you probably won't be able to pick all of them up since you have a small inventory early on with only one inventory upgrade coming later. Also, there's no map and no way to know if you're going the right way. So I ended up missing a lot of branching paths because I went down what I thought was a branching path that actually turned out to be where I needed to go and the door closed and locked behind me. The game is painfully linear. Go here and do this with no real room for backtracking. Let's move on to the good parts of the game because I don't want to just dunk on the game. There are lots of aspects that I enjoyed. First and foremost, the game looks amazing. The levels are beautifully rendered with great lighting. The characters and enemies look amazing and are well animated. The sound design is on point. Cutscenes are high quality and well acted by all the actors. The story is really engaging and had me fully invested all the way through, but kind of felt a little rushed by the end. Like, a lot of revelations and twists are revealed back to back towards the end. But other than that, it's a pretty solid story in my opinion. I think this game was hurt by people, myself included, expecting an experience closer to that of Dead Space. The combat may feel clunky and, god, the PC version had horrible performance on release but has since been patched and the support team has been very open to player feedback and working on bug fixes. All in all, I think the IP has potential to be amazing. The characters are good, the world feels fleshed out, and the game ends with sequel bait, so we'll see where it goes. Also, the Season Pass mentions Story DLC, so that's something to look forward to. If they make a sequel, which I think they should, and take into account the feedback and criticism of players and reviewers alike, Callisto Protocol Phase 2, or whatever they decide to call it, could be just as good, if not better, than Dead Space. Okay, maybe that's an exaggeration, but you get the point. The Callisto Protocol isn't a masterpiece, but it isn't terrible either. It's just mid.